Hello, I'm Paul Lefevre, the Real Software Developer Evangelist. In this video, I'm going to show you how to connect to PostgreSQL using Real Studio. To get started, if you haven't already, you're going to need to install PostgreSQL. You can download it right from their website here at this URL for a variety of platforms. Once you've downloaded it, just double click and run the installer. It'll walk you through everything you need to do. After the installation is completed, you're going to want to run the PG Admin 3 tool. This tool allows you to connect to the database and look at its various settings and, and databases and tables and everything that's in the database. You'll see the database initially showed up right here. You can double click on it to make sure you're connected. And then underneath you can expand the databases to see that the default database that was created for you is also happens to be called Postgres. And that's important because that's what we're going to connect to using Real Studio. So switching to Real Studio, I have here a small application that's going to do four tasks. It's going to connect to PostgreSQL. It's going to create a table in PostgreSQL. It's then going to add data to that table. And then it's going to retrieve the data from the table and display it in the list box. Let's take a look. Now I've broken these four tasks into four buttons, so you can see, and we'll do them step by step. The first button, the connect button, let me make this bigger so you can see it, is going to connect to the database. It has a corresponding label that will be used to display the status, whether the connection succeeded or failed. The next button is the create table button. This button will create the table in the database, and it will also create something called a sequence to manage the prime or to create the primary key values. We'll look at that in a moment. This also has a corresponding status label. The add data button will add data to the table that was just created. And it has a status button as well. The show data button will then take the data that was added to the table, retrieve it back from the database, and display it in this list box right here. The data list list box has four columns, each of which are going to match to the four columns in the table. So let's take a look at the first step. I'll double click on this, and this jumps into the action event handler for the button. Before we do anything, we need two properties. The first is MDB as PostgreSQL database. And this is the database instance that will be used to connect to Postgres and maintain the connection to Postgres. It's a property because it's used by all four of the tasks. And this is one way to share it across all of them. M is connected is another Boolean that is used to indicate if um, the connection to the database was successful. So going back to the event handler, we assign an instance of the PostgreSQL database class to our property. Then set the properties of the database. Localhost, because it is on the host is localhost because the database is installed on this particular computer. The username by default is Postgres, and the password is whatever you specify for the password when you install the database. I happen to use DB example. And the database name is Postgres as well. And this should be lowercase. Then you call the connect method of the database. And if it returns true, then we successfully connect it to Postgres. So the property can be set to true, and we indicate that on the label. If there was an error, property remains at false, and we display the error message in the label. So let's run this. And I'll click the connect button. And you can see that it says connected to Postgres. So it appears that worked. Great. Now we can move on to the next step. And that's to create the team table. Here there is the SQL that creates the team table. Uh, the syntax is create table followed by the name of the table, in this case team, and then in parentheses the name of each of the columns and their types. The first column is ID, and this is the primary key. 
So it has a few more uh, specifications after it. It's an integer, it's not null, and it's specified as the primary key. The next three columns, name, coach, and city, are all simply text types. Uh, the code then checks to see if the, we're connected to the database, and if so, runs the SQL command. If there is an error, the error is displayed, and we get out. If there's no error, we proceed to the next step, and this is the sequence that I uh, briefly mentioned earlier. Uh, PostgreSQL does not have auto-incrementing uh, fields on tables. Instead, you have to create a separate database object called a sequence, who is responsible for creating um, incrementing values to use in primary keys. In this case, I've created a sequence called Team SEQ, Team Seek, and started it at the value of 1. Then create it, and if there's an error, display the error and get out. Otherwise, everything created successfully. So let's run this. Connect to the database and create the table. And here you can see that both the table and the sequence were created successfully. Moving on to the next step, adding the sample data. You can see here that uh, three rows are going to be added, uh, just to keep things simple. We're adding uh, three teams called the Seagulls, the Pigeons, and the Crows, each with their own coach and their own city. To do this, it calls the add team row method three times, and that method returns true if the row was added successfully and false if it didn't. So essentially, this is saying if all three rows added successfully, then we update the status to say three rows are added, otherwise there is an error. So let's jump down to the add team row method. Here you can see the code that adds each row to the database. As parameters, the three columns that are being added, name, coach, and city, are listed at the top. First, check to make sure you're connected. Then you create a database record, create a new instance of it, and then assign each of the values. The first value that's assigned is the primary key, and this is assigned in a, a value from the sequence. We'll look at this method in a moment, which actually gets whatever the next value is from the sequence. Then the name, coach, and city are assigned the values that were passed in as parameters. This is inserted into the team row. If there is an error, the error is displayed, otherwise we return. Now let's look at get next sequence value. This is a simple select statement that calls the PostgreSQL command to get the next value in a particular sequence. It looks like this, select the next val function, and then the name of the sequence here in quotes. A sequence value can get pretty large, so we're using int64 here, and it checks if you're connected to the database, and if so, creates a record set, uh, runs the SQL, verifies that some data was returned, and gets that data. There's only one column, so it gets the first column. If nothing was found, it sets the sequence to minus one, and then it returns it. So let's run. We'll connect to the database. Uh, we've already created the team table when we ran it last time, so if we click the button again, we should get an error. Yes, error, because team already exists. That's not a problem. It uh, just means the table's already there, so now we can add the data to it. And it says the three rows are added to team. So now we're up to our final step. Show the data. This code checks if you're connected to the database. And then it deletes all the rows from the list box. Actually, there's one error right here. If we're not connected to the database, we should not continue. So we had a return right there. Now the data list is deleted so that the rows don't get repeated if you uh, run this repeatedly. And the SQL to get the data from the team table is very simple. Select star from team, the star meaning get all the columns that are in team. A record set's going to hold all the information that comes back from that SQL, and you call the SQL select command using the SQL. 
If the record set's not nil, then it can be processed, and you do that using a while loop, and you continue to loop until you've reached the EOF, meaning there's no more data left. And then a row is added to the data list list box each time data is retrieved from the record set. And essentially here is just adding each of the, the columns, one through four. There's column one, column two, column three, column four. Moves to the next row, and this repeats until there's no more rows, and then the record set is closed. So if I run this and connect to the database, don't need to run these two anymore because we've already created the table, we've already added the sample data. So if I just click show sample data now, you'll see the data. And that's it. A couple other minor housekeeping points. There is another function on here called isConnected. And here I simply am checking, in addition to returning uh, the mIsConnected property, I'm also checking that if the database happens to be nil for any reason, we set the property to false. And then lastly, as an event handler, in the close event handler, when then this is run essentially when the main window closes. If the database is not nil, then we close it before the application closes. Don't technically have to do that. That'll happen automatically, but it's a, a nice, safe cleanup thing to do. Well, thanks for watching. I hope this uh, helps you use PostgreSQL with Real Studio. Again, I'm Paul Lefevre, the Real Software Developer Evangelist.